Hi, welcome back to Ask M. I'm Victor Katch, Professor of Movement Science in uh, the University of Michigan School of Kinesiology. And I want to thank everyone for writing me and having some tremendous questions. Uh, and I'll try to answer a few of them now. Uh, I won't answer the one question, uh, the person from uh, Michigan who asked me whether uh, Buckeyes were poisonous, so I'm going to stay away from that one. But I will answer several of your questions. One from Zen College Life asks, what is the best way to combat muscle soreness? Well, this is a very important question, and the answer isn't really quite that easy. It's necessary to have a, a little bit of an understanding of what muscle soreness is and how we get muscle soreness. So generally, our muscles can become sore when we do unaccustomed exercises. So when we start to perform at a very high intensity, exercises that we're not accustomed to. Eccentric muscle actions are when a muscle elongates. So I'll demonstrate this with this little weight here. This water bottle will act as a weight. So if I'm trying to exercise in the gym, my bicep muscle, and I want to do bicep curls like this, this kind of curl involves a shortening of the muscle, a concentric muscle shortening. When I lower this weight down, the angle gets larger and this muscle elongates or lengthens. That's called eccentric muscle action. Now it appears that there's much more muscle soreness following eccentric muscle action than there is concentric muscle actions. Now, what do we do about it? How do we sort of reduce down the amount of muscle soreness? Well, research is not so clean here. Some people suggest that maybe vitamin E, selenium, or even vitamin C can reduce the amount of inflammation or the amount of muscle tearing. Obviously, the less you do, uh, uh, the less soreness you're going to get. So it's probably good advice to start very slowly until you do major overload training, particularly uh, with weights. Usually, typical muscle soreness will dissipate within one to four days and you'll be ready to go again. The second question comes from Ann Martinez, Martinez, who asks, I hear mixed things about coconut oil. Some say it's best to cook with, others say it's downright dangerous. What are my thoughts? Well, there is a widespread notion that coconut oil is not good for you uh, and that it's responsible for increasing cholesterol and um, promoting heart disease. Well, coconut oil, one of the tropical oils, uh, is a saturated fatty acid. But most of the research done on coconut oil it was done on what is called partially hydrogenated coconut oil. So with, when you take an oil and you hydrogenate it, you change the chemical formulation, and what happens is you turn it into a trans fatty acid. About 50% of coconut oil is made up of lauric acid, which is a medium chain fatty acid. Uh, that raises cholesterol, but it raises the high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is thought to be cardioprotective, uh, in contrast to the trans fatty acids. So in that sense, coconut oil, or dietary coconut oil, the non-hydrogenated coconut oil, is not that bad for you. Another interesting question came from Beth Becker, who asks about what types of acids are built up in the body when we exercise, and other than antioxidants, what are nutritional strategies to combat them? Well, it's a misconception that when we exercise, the acids that are produced, particularly lactic acid, is a waste product and is harmful to our bodies. Well, the truth is, is that lactic acid is a natural byproduct of sugar breakdown, and it, uh, uh, particularly during high level intense exercise. It's a natural outcome, it's not bad. This lactic acid freely diffuses into the body, it goes to other muscles, it goes to the heart, and is used as a substrate for energy. Some of it is uh, uh, reconverted back into uh, lactic acid in the body or, or dissipated as carbon dioxide. So it's really not a waste product. It is in fact uh, something that's a natural byproduct and there's nothing that we can do to try to diminish the effects. Antioxidants won't do that. While they're very important for health reasons, they have no effect whatsoever on lactic acid. And for most people, we don't need to 
to worry about the buildup of lactic acid in the body because it dissipates very quickly. I want to thank you for writing in on questions and I want you to stay tuned and ask him to find out what's going on at the University of Michigan.